Hey there, I'm Mark. Before I dive into this crazy story, do me a solid and hit that like and subscribe button, would you? Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this wild ride. I'm a 35-year-old software engineer living the suburban dream with my wife, Sarah. We've been hitched for five years and life's been pretty sweet, except for one tiny nagging issue that's about to blow up in our faces. Enter Sarah's mom, Karen. Now Karen's a piece of work. She's the 60-year-old retired teacher who thinks she's God's gift to interior design. Every few months, she rolls into our house like a tornado, leaving chaos in her wake. And let me tell you, it ain't pretty. Honey, have you seen my laptop charger? I called out to Sarah one day after one of Karen's visits. Did you check the guest room? Sarah replied from the kitchen. I groaned. Why would it be in the guest room? I always keep it in my office. Mom probably thought it looked messy on your desk. See what I'm dealing with here? Karen doesn't just move a few throw pillows around. Oh, no. She goes full-on extreme makeover. Furniture, rearranged, closets, reorganized, kitchen cabinets, completely overhauled. It's like living in a fun house, but without the fun. I tried talking to Sarah about it. Babe, don't you think your mom's taking this redecorating thing a bit too far? Sarah just shrugged. That's just how mom is. She likes things a certain way. But it's our house, I protested. Don't you think we should have a say in where our stuff goes? She's just trying to help, Mark. Can't you appreciate that? I bit my tongue, but inside, I was seething. Appreciate it? I'd appreciate it if I could find my own socks in the morning without embarking on a scavenger hunt. After every visit, I'd spend days trying to put things back where they belonged. It was like solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Hey, Sarah, why is my gaming console in the linen closet? Oh, Mom thought it would collect less dust in there. I swear, one of these days, I'm gonna lose it. The frustration was building up, and I felt like a stranger in my own home. It's one thing to rearrange a few knickknacks, but Karen was crossing lines faster than a kid with a crayon and no supervision. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, Sarah dropped a bombshell on me. We were having dinner one night when she casually mentioned, Oh, by the way, Mom called earlier. She's planning to stay with us for two weeks next month. I nearly choked on my spaghetti. Two weeks? Are you serious? Sarah nodded, oblivious to my panic. Yeah, isn't that great? We'll have plenty of time to catch up. Great, more like a nightmare. I could already see it. Two weeks of Karen turning our house upside down, criticizing every little thing, and me slowly losing my mind. How the hell was I going to survive this? As I lay in bed that night, staring at the ceiling, I couldn't shake the dread. Two weeks of Karen's perfecting. Two weeks of biting my tongue. Two weeks of feeling like a guest in my own home. Something had to give, and I had a sinking feeling it was going to be my sanity. The day Karen arrived, I swear the air got thicker. She waltzed in, suitcases in tow, and immediately started tisking at everything she saw. Oh, Sarah dear, these curtains are all wrong for the living room. And Mark, is that how you arrange your shoes? I bit my tongue so hard I tasted blood. Welcome, Karen. How was your trip? She waved her hand dismissively. Never mind that. There's work to be done here. And so began the longest two weeks of my life. Karen was like a tornado, whirling through our house, leaving destruction in her wake. Nothing was safe from her critical eye. One evening, I was cooking dinner when Karen peered over my shoulder. Is that how you chop onions? No wonder your meals lack flavor. I gripped the knife tighter. I didn't realize there was a wrong way to chop onions, Karen. Well, now you know. Here, let me show you. Before I could protest, she'd taken over, criticizing everything from my knife skills to my choice of seasoning. Sarah just stood by, offering weak smiles and shrugs. Mom knows best, right? She'd say, as if that made it all okay. But the real kicker came a few days later. I'd had a hellish day at work, dealing with a system crash that had me pulling my hair out. All I wanted was to collapse in my office chair and decompress. Except my office chair wasn't where I'd left it. Neither was my desk or my files or anything else. What the hell, I muttered, standing in the doorway of what used to be my sanctuary. Sarah appeared behind me. Oh, Mom thought your office could use a refresh. Doesn't it look great? I stood there speechless as Karen joined us. Mark, dear, 
I've optimized your workspace for maximum efficiency. You can thank me later. That was it, the last straw. I stormed out of the house, needing air before I said something I'd regret. As I paced the backyard, I could hear Karen and Sarah chatting through the open window. Oh, Sarah, you should see my garden back home, Karen was saying, her voice dripping with pride. My rose bushes are the envy of the neighborhood, and don't get me started on my vegetable patch. I won first prize at the county fair last year. I rolled my eyes, but then Karen said something that made me stop in my tracks. It's my pride and joy, Sarah. Everything in its perfect place, not a petal out of line. It's what I call true perfection. Suddenly, an idea hit me like a bolt of lightning. A wicked grin spread across my face as a plan started forming in my mind. That night, after everyone had gone to bed, I snuck down to the living room with my laptop. My fingers flew over the keys as I booked a flight to Karen's hometown for the following weekend. When Sarah found me the next morning, I was ready with my excuse. Honey, I'm sorry, but there's an emergency at work. I need to fly out this weekend to sort it out. She looked disappointed but understanding. Oh, that's too bad. Mom will be sad to see you go. I fought to keep the smirk off my face. Yeah, real shame, but duty calls, you know? As I packed my bag, I couldn't help but feel a thrill of anticipation. Karen had no idea what was coming. She thought her garden was perfect. Well, I was about to give it my own special touch of perfection. Little did Karen know her prized garden was about to get a makeover of its own, and this time I'd be the one calling the shots. Payback was going to be sweet, or should I say floral. As I pulled up to Karen's house, my heart was racing faster than a squirrel on espresso. I double-checked to make sure her car was gone. Yep, coast was clear, showtime. I slipped into her backyard like a cat burglar, except instead of jewels, I was after junipers. And man, what a sight. Karen's garden was like something out of a magazine, all prim and proper, not a petal out of place. Well, not for long. All right, Karen, I muttered, cracking my knuckles. Let's see how you like a taste of your own medicine. I started with her precious rose bushes. Those babies were getting a new home. I dug them up carefully, no damage, just like Karen does in my house, and replanted them in a zigzag pattern that would make her eyes cross. How's that for optimizing your space, huh? Next up, her flower beds. I mixed those puppies up like a DJ at a rave. Tulips with daisies, petunias with marigolds. It was a rainbow explosion that would make a unicorn jealous. Perfecting your color scheme, Karen. You're welcome. But I wasn't done yet. Oh no, I was just getting warmed up. Those garden gnomes she's so proud of? They got front row seats to the chaos. I arranged them in a circle like they were having a gnome rave. Even threw in a few yoga poses for good measure. Namaste, little dudes. Hope you enjoy the view. The birdbath? That sucker found a new home smack in the middle of the lawn. Now that's what I call a water feature, baby and her prize-winning vegetable patch? Let's just say those tomatoes and cucumbers were about to get real cozy in the far corner of the yard. Hope you like a nice walk, Karen. Gotta get those steps in, right? As I stood back to admire my handiwork, I couldn't help but chuckle. The garden looked like it had been hit by a tornado with an art degree. It was chaotic, it was bizarre, and it was absolutely perfect. For the finishing touch, I scribbled a note and stuck it to her back door. Thought your garden could use some perfecting. Hope you appreciate the improvements. As I headed for the airport, I felt lighter than I had in years. The spring in my step could have powered a trampoline park. I kept imagining Karen's face when she saw her improved garden. Would she blow a gasket? Have a meltdown? Either way, it was going to be epic. On the flight home, I couldn't wipe the grin off my face. The lady next to me probably thought I was nuts, but I didn't care. For once, I wasn't the one feeling out of place and disrespected. The tables had turned, and man, did it feel good. How was your work trip, hun? Sarah asked when I got home. I fought to keep a straight face. Oh, you know, just had to rearrange some things, nothing major. If only she knew. But that was a secret I'd keep to myself. For now, I'd just sit back and wait for the fireworks. Karen wanted perfection? Well, she was about to get a whole new definition of the word. As I unpacked my bag, I couldn't help but whistle a happy tune.
For the first time in years, I felt like I'd won a round against Hurricane Karen. And let me tell you, victory smelled sweet with just a hint of freshly turned soil. The rest of Karen's visit was a blur of rearranged furniture and backhanded compliments. I kept my cool, biting my tongue so hard I'm surprised it didn't fall off. Finally the day came for her to leave. Well, I suppose I've done all I can here, Karen sighed, as if she'd just completed a humanitarian mission instead of turning our house upside down. As soon as her car disappeared around the corner, Sarah and I let out a collective sigh of relief. Let's get this place back to normal, I said, already moving the couch back where it belonged. Sarah nodded, a little smile on her face. You know, maybe Mom does go a bit overboard sometimes. I bit back a sarcastic, ya yeah, think, and just nodded. A week passed and life was just getting back to normal when Sarah's phone rang. From the way her eyes widened, I knew it was Karen before Sarah even said hello. Mom, Mom, calm down, what's wrong? I perked up, trying to look concerned while my heart did a little victory dance. Vandalized? Your whole garden? Oh no, that's terrible. I had to turn away to hide my smirk. Your rose bushes are where? And the gnomes are doing what? Sarah paced the room, making soothing noises into the phone. Don't worry, Mom. We'll come visit this weekend and help you sort it out. As she hung up, Sarah turned to me with a bewildered look. Someone completely rearranged Mom's garden. She's freaking out. I schooled my features into what I hoped was a sympathetic expression. That's awful. Who would do such a thing? Sarah shook her head. I don't know, but she's beside herself. Says it looks like a modern art disaster. I felt a twinge of guilt, but then remembered all the times Karen had messed with our stuff. Karma's a bitch, ain't it? A few days later, Sarah got another call from Karen. This time, her voice was so loud I could hear it from across the room. They want to what? Sarah exclaimed. I raised an eyebrow, curious. A gardening magazine wants to feature your new layout? That's great, right? I nearly choked on my coffee. This was too good. After she hung up, Sarah turned to me, looking dazed. You're not going to believe this. Some local gardening magazine saw Mom's vandalized garden and loved it. They're calling it avant-garde and want to feature it in their next issue. I couldn't hold back my laughter. You're kidding me. Sarah shook her head, a smile tugging at her lips. Nope. And get this. Mom's going to keep it that way to save face with her gardening club friends. As the laughter died down, Sarah's face grew serious. You know, this whole thing has got me thinking. Maybe we need to have a talk with Mom about boundaries. I tried not to look too eager. Oh, she nodded. Yeah, I mean, I love her. But the way she comes in and changes everything... I can see now how frustrating that must be for you. I felt a wave of relief wash over me. Finally, she got it. That night, as we lay in bed, Sarah turned to me. I'm going to talk to Mom about respecting our space when she visits. It's our home, after all. I pulled her close, feeling more vindicated than I had in years. Thanks, babe. That means a lot. As Sarah drifted off to sleep, I couldn't help but smile to myself. Every time Karen looked at her garden now, she'd be reminded of her own behavior. Talk about poetic justice. Sometimes, karma works in mysterious ways. And sometimes, it works through strategically replanted rose bushes and rearranged garden gnomes. Either way, I'd call this mission accomplished. As I closed my eyes, I couldn't help but chuckle. Life was good, and for once, everything was exactly where it should be. The story's over, folks. Now, let me ask you this. Was I justified in rearranging Karen's garden, or did I cross a line? Sure, she invaded our privacy and messed with our home, but did two wrongs make a right here? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm dying to know if you'd have handled it differently, or if you've got your own mother-in-law horror stories to share. If you enjoyed this roller coaster of domestic drama, smash that like button and subscribe for more juicy tales of revenge and family chaos. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next.